Hello, Sweetwater families. This is Ms. Gavin, your principal, and thank you for joining me again. Thank you for viewing our, the video I sent you a couple of weeks ago addressing some of the general questions you may have had. And then after viewing that video, some of you completed the survey that was provided on our website and you gave some general topics you would like me to address and maybe even more specific questions. So I have my notes here. I wanna make sure that I address your questions or topics. And um, I will do this every couple of weeks to just keep you informed. But please know that we are all here to serve you. It's not just me, but our assistant principals, our counselors, our teachers. If you have any specific questions, especially specific to your students uh, involving teachers, counselors, administrators, please make sure you email us and we will answer your question right away. I don't want you to have to wait two weeks to get an answer to your question. So one of the general topics you wanted me to discuss is distance learning. So as you know, right now we have started distance learning between our teachers and our students. And teachers have been communicating with students. Our main goal the first two weeks, which was, which were the weeks of April 6th and April 13th was to reach out to our students and make sure that we knew that they were around, that they were answering emails or phone calls. We just wanna make sure they were safe and make sure that they knew that distance learning would begin on Monday, April 20th. So with that, teachers have now been providing instruction this week and will continue to do so until the end of the semester. Now, some of you have had questions about the schedules that teachers will be using when providing instruction. So right now, teachers are using asynchronous instruction, which means it's not in real time. Most of them are recording their instruction and then making it available to students and parents to view when they are able to do so. So there is a general schedule that our district sent us and that our school has provided, but we also know that students may not be able to access their learning during that specific time. So most teachers are providing asynchronous instruction, which means students can view the video at their leisure. Now, in addition to that, some teachers are also providing synchronous instruction, but it's mostly discussions uh, or discussion groups where they have students invite students to, to join in on conversations, discussion groups, and that doesn't penalize them if they are not able to join at that time. That's in addition to viewing the instructional video that the teachers provide. But they wanted to have some sort of platform where students can engage in discussions with the teacher and students uh, live so that it's not all recording. And then assignments are being sent out online to students who have the means, who have the laptops and have the technology access at home. For those that do not have laptops or technology access at home, who are not able to even access assignments or instruction on their phones, we are preparing packets for students to pick up. As soon as the district gives us the okay to have students or parents pick those packets up from school, we will send you a schedule. Our main priority right now is to make sure that everyone is safe and in good health. So with everyone being involved, that students, parents, staff members, we wanna make sure we have safety precautions in place to ensure that we continue with our good health. So as soon as we are given the okay by the district to send that out to you, we will send you information on how and when to pick up those packets for students who do not have technology access at home. The other general topic was on how to best communicate with staff. The best format to use is email. That is the best. So if you have email or access to technology, that is the best way to communicate with staff members. And staff members in general will reply to your email within 24 hours or less in some cases. Um, right now, our campus is closed, so we don't have access to our phones on campus. But there are certain people that may have provided their phone numbers or direct lines to, to the school. For example, I know our counselors sent you a letter and it lists all the counselors and their direct line to their office phone number. Now, no one is there to pick up their phone, but you can leave a message and they are able to access those messages from home and then someone will return your phone call. They will return your phone call. So if you have email, that's the best, but for now you can leave a message at school, but understand that it may take some time before someone is able to get back to you. Um, the other general topic you wanted me to address is to see if the counselors can send updates on counseling center items, and they are doing that. 
So they have already sent letters home, giving you some updates. If you can go to their website, that always has uh, a lot of updates regarding students and registration and classes and graduation requirements and so forth. So you can go to the suhaicounseling.com website, and you can also access that website through our school website, Sweetwater High School's website. And then finally, you were asking about registration for next year, 2020-2021 registration. So we are updating our website. You, If you go there, we do have registration information, but we will add some more updates. In case you have questions, we will provide a phone number you can call if you have questions. Now, some of the specific questions you asked is what platforms are teachers going to be using for instruction? Some are using different platforms. Some are using Canvas. Some are using Microsoft Teams. And some are using Google Classroom. So depending on the platform your students' teachers are using, they will have, they will or have already sent a plan that outlines what platform they're using and what time they will push out instruction that students can access via video, and if they are going to have discussions or live chats, when those will take place. Again, if your student cannot join in on those chats, it's not going to affect their grade. The other question you asked is, how is distance learning going to affect their overall grade this semester? We do realize that students go to school for a reason. They need that support, that one-on-one -on -one support from their teachers, their peers in the classroom. And when they're not physically there, it makes it that much more difficult for them to get their work done on their own. So we are taking that into consideration. And as much as we're able to provide the best education possible online, we do know it's not the best format for our students' learning needs. So we do take that into consideration and know that no student's grade will be lowered from whatever they had when we last left on March 13th. So for example, if as of March 13th, their grade was a C in scholarship in that class, they will not get anything less than a C at the end of the semester. So between now and the end of the semester, it's all for grade improvement. So they can get a B or an A if they turn in assignments, show a lot of effort, then we will certainly use that work to increase their grade, but if for whatever reason they are not able to submit assignments or, or engage in some of the discussions, it's not going to hurt their grade. So between now and the end of the semester, it's to improve their grade. So with that said, if they had a D or an F, it's in their best interest to make sure they really do their best to submit assignments. But again, we're going to work with students we know that this is not the ideal situation for them when it comes to their learning, but we are prioritizing their safety and health, which is why we want to make sure that we don't stress them out any more or increase their anxiety. So the best thing to do is to communicate with teachers and counselors and make sure that we can support your needs. So if you have questions, concerns about the work or submitting the work to help improve grades, please reach out to those teachers and counselors if, it, if it's necessary. Also, the other question is, what about how this distance learning will affect students with an IEP? So students who are receiving special education services will also be provided the support they need as best possible online. So we do know that our students with an IEP get accommodations, modifications to assignments while at school. We will do the same thing online as best possible. Now, with that said, there are certain services that cannot be provided online because some of these services take place in the classroom. And these goals and items that are outlined in the IEP are specific to the interactions that happen in the classroom. For example, a student sitting at the front of the room so that it's easier for them to access information. So obviously that doesn't apply when they're at home, but again, case carriers, teachers, and psychologists are working with students to make sure that we provide the best education possible and more importantly, the support they need. So if you have any questions or concerns about your students' grades, if they have an IEP or the support or lack thereof that they're getting, please reach out to your students' teachers or their case carrier who can give you more information. Now, you also had questions about 504 plans. What about if your student has a 504 plan? So that is still in place. 
And again, same thing as an IEP, we try to support our students as best possible and make sure that they are having their needs met. So if you have a question about their 504 plan or you believe that there's something in the 504 plan that's not being implemented, that can be implemented online and virtually during this instruction, then please reach out to the teacher or the administrator, the assistant principal who oversees your student. Next, we have how, um, how will grades be affected with the new ways of learning? I already went over that. And I also wanna let you know that the progress report card is going to come out on May 15th. So students will be sent a progress report and families will be sent a progress report on their students' grades up until May 15th. So we have to make some adjustments to our progress report dates because we did miss out some instructional time while we were preparing for distance learning. But know that a progress report will go out May 15th. And again, it's only for grade improvement. No student's grade will be lowered from whatever they left with on Friday, March 13th. And will each student have their own schedule or will it be different? So teachers have either already sent or are sending right now their distance learning plans that outline the schedule. Now, for the most part, the schedules are pretty much the same. So like I said, most teachers are doing asynchronous instruction, which means that the, the lessons are pre-recorded and students and families can access them at any time. And students can complete their work at any time and submit it back to teachers at any time. So there is a general schedule that has been sent to you by each of your students' teachers. And if you haven't received it already, you should get it by the end of this week. And questions on credit recovery. So if students are enrolled in credit recovery, they're probably about halfway through the process and teachers, their credit recovery teachers are working with their students to ensure that they are getting the assignments, the instruction and support they need to complete that credit that they're enrolled in. So again, we we had to adjust the schedule, as you know, because we missed out on some instructional time, but teachers are working with students to ensure they get that credit as best possible because we know they need it for graduation. Again, any concerns, please reach out to that credit recovery teacher or assistant principals or myself administration or counselors. We can try to connect you to that teacher if you have any specific questions. And then what about what happens to uh, those who paid for grad night or prom or put in a deposit? So Ms. Morris, our ASB Dean, did send out a letter via Jupiter Grades and she also posted it on our school website. So there is a letter that outlines how families will get their refunds if you paid for grad night and or prom. So that information is there on our school website and it was also sent to you via Jupiter. And if you have any questions regarding cap and gown, that is something you have to access on your own with the vendor. So our vendor is Balfour and the representative for Balfour is David Honnold. Here's the phone number you can call if you have questions, concerns, or feel you need to have a refund for your cap and gown. And that number is area code 619-434-6855. Once again, families, thank you so much for your support and kindness and understanding. I know these are very tough times for everyone, but we are all here working together, communicating with you, our families, our parents to best support our students. And students, if you're watching this, please know that we will support you 100% as best we can. We miss you so much. I know I miss greeting you in front of the school each morning, seeing you on campus, but we will come together again. That time will happen, but we have to be patient because like I said at the beginning, our safety and good health is a priority. So we do have to stay in our homes, just like I'm staying at home and make sure we take care of ourselves so that once again, we'll come together and we'll have some sort of celebration for you because I know you are outstanding students and deserve the best. Thank you everyone. Until next time, and also know that when you view this video and if you still have questions, the link on our website is still there. So parents, students, if you have specific questions, you can access that link on our website and post some topics and questions you may still have and I hope to address those soon. Thank you very much, bye.